Good afternoon, everyone. I am checking in with you to bring something special to you. I hope that this works out and I'm not sure how it will, but we're going to try to bring a virtual rock and mineral show to you at home through uh, short video clips. I'm going to start with a basic introduction to the rock cycle. So I'm going to pull up a screen share here of the rock cycle and we're going to look at this here. So the rock cycle starts with sediment. Hang on, let me, here we go. Starts with sediment or broken down pieces of rock. And as those are laid down in flat layers, rocks are layered in flat layers. As they're laid down, they get compressed and squished together and become rock. And so the first type of rock we're gonna talk about is sedimentary rock. Okay, now we're gonna try something different. Let's see if we can do this. I'm gonna turn my camera around and show you some rocks. So hang on a second here. Okay, so we're starting with sedimentary rocks. And the first sedimentary rock we're gonna start with is something that's made of silt or very, very fine particles. This right here is a silt stone. Let's see if I can bring that light up a little less harsh on it. So this is made of silty, fine, fine particles. So you can see that it's coming off on my hand as I rub it. Um, the rock is coming apart into little tiny pieces because this is made of the fine little particles that when you're in a lake or in a slow moving river and you walk around and it stirs up the bottom, when those little particles form a rock, they form this, a silt stone. So the particles in this are very, very small, and it's almost like greasy to the touch when I feel it. It's very fine particles. This is another piece. This is a piece from uh, locally here. This is a piece of what's called the Leita Formation. This is also a, an old lake bed, and when you collect pieces of this, you can find fossils of plants and insects in it. This one here, that's a leaf fossil right there. It's kind of hard to see it. But this Leita formation formed here in our area during the last ice age. Now here's one that's not local. This is a piece of chalk. And you often see chalk in sticks that we write on like a, on a uh, chalkboard. But this is a piece of chalk, what it looks like when it's formed as a rock. This one's formed in um, underwater and my hand's getting all chalky on the backside there. You can see as we rub it that um, the chalk dust comes off. It's hard for me to turn my hand that way. Here, let's do it this way. You can see the chalk right there on my hands. So chalk is a sedimentary rock. Here's another sedimentary rock. This is a piece of coal. So, um, coal is um, really, uh, dense old plant material. So this is was once in like a really warm, humid, moist climate where there were lots of plant materials that when they died all went to the bottom of whatever the water surface was that they were in, either a bay or a shallow lake or a swamp, and over time got condensed down into making a rock. This is a piece of coal. This is a piece of shale. Shale is really cool. You can see it's very, very flat. People use this for, um, for paving stones and things and also slate, which I'll show you in just a little bit. So this is a piece of shale. It's also very, very fine materials, just like our siltstone, but um, the particles lay down flat and make a, um, a more firm rock than what you had, what you saw with the siltstone. So the siltstone, is made of very similar material as this, but um, this is more compacted into a rock. Okay, I have lots of samples here on the floor, so I'm just being, being able to grab what I can reach. So I'm gonna show you another kind of sandstone. This is, our, or another kind of rock, this is a sandstone, let's see. Try to find a way to light it up without it washing out the color, let's see if we can. show you this one. This is a type of sandstone. Here we go. This is a piece of sandstone called Arco sandstone. It's hard to see the color of it. This one's very pink when you see it in person. Um, you can kind of see that. So this is sandstone. So this would be like a uh, beach sand that's been fossilized, or not fossilized, but compacted and turned into a rock. 
Okay, so that was our sedimentary rocks. Let me go into a screen share here and show you that image of the rock cycle again. Here, so we've been talking about sedimentary rocks. Oh, I forgot to tell you, sedimentary, the etymology for sedimentary is, um, comes back from the 1540s and the Middle French um, sediment or the Latin, even older, the Latin sedimentum means a settling or sinking down. And the, um, so sed means to sit. And so it's sedimentary rocks that are sitting down or as they're laying down. Okay, so here we have sedimentary rocks again that um, are sediments that have been laid down. They can be weathered and eroded back into sediment, but then they get redeposited as sedimentary rock. As we move over this direction through heat and pressure and sometimes changes in uh, the chemicals or the chemical reactions within rocks, we change from a sedimentary rock into a metamorphic rock. Now the etymology of metamorphic, um, Meta means to, to change, and morph is form, so it's a rock that is changing form. And here it's changing its form by heat or pressure or again, um, chemical reactions within the rock. So I'm gonna come out of the screen share and I'm gonna bring up some metamorphic rocks. For that to start though, I wanna go back to talking about our shale. I just have to find where I set it down. Right here. So here's a piece of our shale. It's very flat. As it goes through metamorphosis, um, it turns into slate. That's a little bit of heat, a little bit of pressure, changes it into slate. And then as we move on through, the, through that process, we get what's called phyllite. So you can see that this still has flat layers like the shale or the slate, but phyllite has some lined up minerals. You can see that they're making kind of a lot lines down this direction along the face of it. And you can't really see in the video, but it gets kind of a shiny tint to it. You can see some of those really cool features. Let's see if I can get it turned just right. It's hard to see on that one. You can see some of those little bumpy ridges. You can feel, hear my fingernail going across them. So there's little ridges in them. So this is a phyllite. I, uh, I'm really sad because I left the next piece at school. I had it out on the desk last week. It's a schist. Now schist is a rock that's like a phyllite, only it's slightly more metamorphic. And it has some recrystallization going on because there's enough heat and pressure and we get garnets in that. So the garnet schist is on my desk at school. Um, and then after a schist, then we get into what's called a gneiss. And a gneiss happens when the crystals are heated up so much that they start to recrystallize into layers. So the minerals reorient themselves into layers. So you can see this dark layer right here. I'm going to get it close and see if you can see in there. Um, there's a dark layer on top. Usually that's like the biotite micas and maybe some horn blends and other dark minerals that are recrystallizing into these black layers like right here and here and of course this top surface as well. You can kind of see the mica shining on that surface right there. And then I have another piece of nice. This one's really cool because it's got some interesting banding in it so you can see you can see some of these bands right here don't quite connect and on this side here you can see it too. So the layers are starting to recrystallize into the black and white layers. Okay, some other metamorphic rocks. When we were talking about sedimentary rocks, you can have a, um, like a sandstone. And when you heat up a sandstone, it turns into quartzite. So it's a recrystallized quartz crystals. This is a piece of quartzite from Chihuahua. And so you can't really tell, but it's very pink in color. And you can see these different layers of light quartzite and red quartzite. So this is a piece of red quartzite. Let me see if I can. Nope, the, the light that I have just kind of washes out my color. So somehow, right, somehow I turned and it was a little bit pink. This one's a pink quartzite. Quartzite is metamorphic uh, sandstone. This is um, a really cool mineral that I wish you could feel. This is talc. And talc is a mineral. Um, this is a rock that has it in there. You can see it in there. 
when I scratch it. Okay, let's see what else I have. Okay, so let's go into back to the screen and look at our rock cycle. So here we've changed heat and pressure rocks. We've changed, um, we changed uh, some slate all the way through the whole cycle. We've looked at some marble. And now we're going to continue adding heat and melt those rocks. Now melted rocks or rocks that come from a melted source are igneous rocks. And igneous comes from the Latin um, ignis, which is a fire or fiery or on fire. And um, it's igneous means to come from fire. And so you see here, as the magma melts and it becomes solid, we get an igneous rock. So on here it has basalt and granite as the mo two most common types. We talk about igneous rocks all the time when we talk about the, the continental crust granite in the oceanic crust, the basalt. And so I want to show some metamorphic rocks to you, or I'm sorry, igneous rocks with you. Here I have a piece of granite. This one's pretty cool. Granite is very recognizable because of the salt and pepper appearance. It's black and white. This one here has some really big crystals in it um, that you can see, but uh, overall granite is a very salt and pepper, large, crystals that are interlocking with each other. So igneous rock, granite. I um, do not know how it's possible that I don't have any basalt in my house. But I don't have any basalt in my house. Um, it is my least favorite of the igneous rocks. Maybe that's why. Here's another piece. This is um, another type of igneous rock. This one formed deep in the earth. That's why there's such big crystals. Igneous, remember from fire. So this these crystals grew from a melted rock. Now, oh, I was wrong. I do have a piece of basalt, but this one's a special piece of basalt. This is a piece of uh, a flowing lava flow. And you can see that as the lava flowed down, it kind of got this weird texture. If you've ever made bread dough and like rolled it over and it started to peel apart, that's what's happening here as this lava flowed down the hill. It started to harden, but then it still kept moving, and so you get this ropey texture. Ropey lava like this is called pohoihoi. That comes from a Hawaiian word meaning ropey, so we call this pohoihoi, and this is basalt. It's hard to see the crystals because it's so, um, the texture's so, um, <laughs> so ropey. We just can't see the crystal structure of that one. And I, again, I was really not true when I said I didn't have any basalt. This is a piece of basalt. This one still has all of those gas bubbles from the lava flow because there's gas inside of the magma and those gas bubbles uh, are full of air and gas and when the, the rock hardens and forms you end up with gas bubble. I always call them gas bu bubble fossils but they're really just where there were pieces of trapped air within the basalt as the basalt uh, was cooling. I have two more little pieces of igneous rock here. This one's really cool because this one has really big horn blend crystals. Again, it's a pink rock. You can barely see that, but this is a pink pink rock with big horn blend crystals. And here's another one that's like granite, but the you can see how big the white crystals are. It's a really cool one to look at. Okay. So I hope that you enjoyed your quick trip through the rock cycle. We started with sedimentary rocks, which were formed from sediment that laid down, and then we heated them up and turned them into metamorphic rocks. And then we heated them up some more and melted them into a magma and they re-solidified into igneous rocks. And at any point, any of these rocks can be weathered and eroded and broken down into little pieces. And then they again become sedimentary rock. So the rock cycle is pretty darn cool. It's how we get all of our different types of rocks. In my next short video, I will share uh, different information about minerals. I'm going to switch you back to see me. Here I am. I'm going to show you a video about some different minerals and let you look at some different mineral specimens that I have here. And I 
didn't get everything from school. So there's still some that aren't here, but I'll show you the best that I can. So I hope you enjoyed your trip through the rock cycle and I will share more with you soon. Bye-bye.